There are a number of passages in Scripture that sound just like that. Malachi 3, 2 to 3, 1 Corinthians 3, 13 to 15, 1 John 1, 7, for examples. Does that mean judgment will come to all of us where needed, but then we will all be rehabilitated? Universal salvation as in view too? Not if we believe two things that keep coming up in the biblical story. First, God is sovereign. We can't tell God that everybody must be saved. Second, humans have been given the gift of freedom, even the freedom to say no to God throughout all eternity and take the consequences. For these two reasons, no blueprints can be made. Nothing like that washes. We see through a glass darkly. And that's true about final judgment, very dimly. Exploring a third option that makes more sense than the oversimplifications of the extremes, an article of hope rather than an article that is dogmatic, an article of faith. Gabe, you said that you were going to get back to us on salvation in this lesson. Does it fit in here? Uh, it certainly does. There are important passages in the New Testament that echo 1 Peter 4, 6, which goes, for this is why the gospel was preached, even to the dead. Why in missionaries in the 19th century were asked by converts to Christianity, what happens to my ancestors who never heard about Christ? The missionaries pondered this question, pertinent in our own pluralistic days when we're aware of billions who never heard of the message of Christ, and salvation by grace through faith in Christ. And they concluded, they concluded that death is no barrier to Christ's message. Like Francis Thompson's great poem, The Hound of Heaven, Jesus Christ pursues us even beyond the boundary of death to speak the word of faith and hope and love. Let me go to the newsprint here and suggest what that might mean as a seventh, indeed an eighth view of particularity and universality. We put a P here and a PU here and a PU here. This, the eighth view, universal particularity, says if you're going to believe in the Christian story, you have to say there's a central chapter, that God acted decisively for the whole world in the person and work of Jesus Christ. So you can't let pluralism erode the particularity of God's way, God's path, God's route into human history to reconcile and liberate and redeem the world. So view eight, universal particularity, holds to a, a big P here. There's a PU here on the truth. You remember what we spoke about in the third chapter on the covenant with Noah? We talked about a general revelation, a common grace, a grace that allows people in all societies, in all religions, in all cultures, at all times to have some glimpse some perception of the good, the true, the beautiful, and the holy. So we must say in high religions and even in people of conscience, there is some perception of the truth about the way the world works. There is a general revelation as well as the particular revelation that's given in Jesus Christ. So we add a U here general revelation, glimpses of truth in any religious tradition, as well as the fullness of truth in the particularity of Jesus Christ. And now we have a P and a U here. We have a P here because we believe hundreds of passages in the New Testament tell us that we are individually, personally saved only through the word of truth in Christ received by grace through faith. But if we follow those Hawaiian missionaries, we come to realize that that word can be preached not only in this life, but in the world to come. Christ descends into the place of the dead 
as it says in the Apostles' Creed. So the early Christian folk who formulated that had their own experience of pluralism and said Christ will universally preach the particularities of Christian truth. So there is a universality here beyond death. But we noticed also in a previous chapter that salvation had to do with this time and this world. Salvation from misery and suffering and indeed injustice, pain and war. Christ is present saving, giving life in human history, wherever the hungry are fed, wherever the prisoner is visited, wherever justice is done and peace made. That's also part of life that God gives in this world as well in, as in the world to come. These are all tough questions we've been struggling with as we examine the issues of last things, the last chapter of the story. And we've talked about two of these dimensions. We've talked about the resurrection of the body and the advent, the second advent, the return of Christ. We'll proceed in the next lesson to two of the other great stained glass windows that portray Christian vision of things to come.